If everyone's pressed they are here with, uh, like, a Spobel. Again, um, they're still doing the finals and all that stuff for, um, Apex Arena, so... Uh... For now, I won't be able to do any more, um, PvP. Unless I want to show off World Arena, but I don't think there's not that much interest for that. Um, so, for this week, uh... New Summon Banner, well, uh, a Focus Summon Banner came out, um... I mentioned, I think last week, I wanted to actually work on this one. Uh, mainly just to get Wyler. Um, I don't intend on using Wyler, uh, but uh, I do need Wyler for uh, certain bond requirements, uh, specifically for uh, Serena here. Uh, Serena cannot unlock her, um, her defense banner, and as a tank, she kind of needs it um, without Wyler's help. So that's. Uh, I want to go ahead and take care of that. Also, it's generally good to go try to, even if you have certain restrictions and you're not interested in certain factions or you know, units in general, um, the more you clear up, the more you collect, uh, the easier it is to get other units. Uh, because the way the focus ban works is, uh, what it, the first SSR I get on this is guaranteed to be one I don't own, um, and I have both Rainforce and Gerald and Layla already. So, um, it. If I get if I get my SSR, uh, it will be Viler. Um, I have been doing little bits of polls on um, the uh, the Masters of Conquest, uh, mainly because there's been um, a bunch of redeem point events going. Which, again, for some reason, they don't actually give notifications that this event was active. Uh, luckily, I found it on um, Reddit uh, being mentioned, and then I went ahead and posted it in my guild chat just to make sure uh, they know about it as well. So, one of the requirements, or one of the options for it was to do a summon every day. And I was like, well, I'm, I kind of want to try to get for another deedlet. So I've just been doing a summon every day for it. Anyway, uh, today though, uh, we're going to go ahead and pull until we get uh, Weiler here. So, worst case scenario, it'll take about 90 summons because I haven't gotten an SSR from this yet. Or haven't gotten the SSR from the past, uh, past week. Alright. So, uh... Let's do this. I apologize ahead of time if my mic pops or anything like that. Uh, my headset cable is pretty much worn down. Um, I'm switching to wireless. To hopefully, do to hopefully they'll last longer. Wow! All right. I was not expecting this this soon. All right. All right, we got Wyler. This voice is pretty faint, but that's all right. Anna, Gerald, and Layla. Okay. All luck has been spent. I, I'm kind of sad this was not on the Deedlet banner, but that's all right. Um... Alright, that's just an SR. Um, Alright. Kakanis, uh, Kakanis? Kakansis, General? Uh, weak body, but strong intellect. He commands the army from there. And of course, I have 116 shards for Jail Layla, which I think means I get our fifth star. Alright. We got it. Um, okay. So that's all my luck spent. Um, that would have been nice to have on the focus banner. That would have been a good chance of me getting in the deed lit. That's alright. Uh, let's go ahead and upgrade Jill and Layla. Alright. Of course, I have PR tests as well. Um, got that just from the login events. Um, it has officially started with the uh, the actual uh, Lotus, the Lotus story um, event stuff, which also gives a high chance of getting. Uh, well, it gives, it gives gives you a bunch of uh, PR tests and uh, Parn shards. So uh, we'll probably be getting her to at least five stars. Also, her Gate of Fate has finally unlocked. For some reason, it wasn't available last week. Um, but yeah, I have her fully 
decked out. I'm not gonna be using her in PvP. Her uh, her factions are a bit limited. Um, I'll talk about my Apex setup that I'm thinking of doing for the, the upcoming season in a little bit. Um, also, last week there were a few other updates that I didn't really mention. Um, three cost skill for Lifany came out, as did um, uh, Angelina's. Um, and then, of course, freaking Jugglers also came out. Juggler... I don't know what the deal with uh, the people that make this game that are hard on for Juggler, but they... Like, he was already top tier tank, and now this 3 cost skill came out, and it's just... Uh, it has an 8 turn cooldown. Uh, does physical damage, it teleports, and it activates both, it activates Tritoning, Great Dragon Barrier, Beast Shock, and does the AoE of Master of Ice. Um, they call it Sacred Beast Him, but they might as well just call it everything, because it literally does everything for this kit. Um, I don't get it. I don't know why I was set up that way, so yeah. Essentially, it, it teleports, activates his top skill for this branch, top skill for this branch, top skill for this branch, and then Triton on top of everything else. Um, so it's an it's a teleport AOE damage debuff that roots and activates his guard. Or activates his physical guard rather. It used to act I think it used to activate both magic and um, defense guard. Um, but they they decided okay that was maybe you know doing five or six things was probably too much, so let's just make it do four things. Um, with this, I'm pretty much going to have to get, I have to now ban Juggler as a first ban, which is something that was already apparently happening in Season 3 for, um, for, um, for the China servers. They were just like, yeah, we're just gonna, your, your choices were either deal with Juggler and deal with a rushdown type strategy, where everyone just tries to rush you down with a bunch of AoE or assassins. Um, if you ban Juggler, it switches to most people will end up picking their um, their Landius instead, and then it'll be more of like a traditional Demon Spank. Um, I I don't want to deal with Juggler anymore uh, with all that nonsense, so that's generally the plan. Um, Lifting 3 cost skill is actually maybe kind of think about trying to use her again. Um, I used her in Season 1, um, and she was a lot of fun. Uh, the problem with Lifting is her entire kit can be shut down with a few items. Um, like, for example, her, her entire gimmick is about setting bombs that do fixed damage, but if someone has, I don't know, a Swordsmith's Biddle, um, which prevents fixed damage, then you're kind of screwed. Um, and even even without swords, but, uh, even without an SSR item, there is SR items, like these Meditation Rings, that also prevent fixed damage, uh, which would just completely shut down Lifany. Also, she kind of gets shut down because the bombs themselves can be dispelled. Um, so characters like uh, Liana or, or just the or having a goddess here can uh, potentially just negate the bomb themselves. Uh, now the neat thing about Magic Vortex, which is her three cost skill, is it bypasses immunity um, both for it, it bypasses immunity and it's immune to being dispelled, um, which is pretty neat. It also does a mobility debuff, but the mobility debuff can be immune and debuff uh, and removed. Um, so. It's, it, it seems to be kind of an awkward skill because it essentially has a two-turn uh, run-up time. Um, but I'm kind of interested in trying it out and seeing how what happens if I put this on like a tank or a healer and see what happens. Um, more likely, if my kit does not work for, it, uh, for Apex, lifting will probably be the first character I replace. Um, also, Angelina is probably going to see some action. She's only five stars because I wasn't planning on using her for a while. But... Um, uh, usually the way I had her built was just as like a tanky, like Aura cast, uh, Aura bruiser type, where she just debuffs and buffs everyone else. That's usually what I use her for, for PvE. Um, in PvP, some people use her as like a kind of a quick acting, uh, Dragon's Breath, uh, AoE type character. Um, and now that she has her three cost skill, um, which does AoE damage. Um, if you're in water, you have a chance of freezing, which, of course, with Tidal Surge, you can pick yourself in water. Um, 
and if it hits three or more enemies, she gets an additional action. Um, so I'm, I want to try this out and see what sort of shenanigans I can get into with this. Um, overall, I'm probably not going to be doing too well, but we'll see. Also, I've been changing her chance around over to um, Full Moon, just to fully optimize her, her attack and defense during her turn. Um, unfortunately, my luck with enchants lately have been pretty abysmal. Uh, as you probably see, my gold is actually low, much lower than it was before. I think it was over 10 million or 11 million last time. Um, but now I'm not even making 8 million simply because of enchant cost. Anyway, enough rambling. Uh, let's go ahead and just do this. <laughs> just knock this out. I know it's not going to give me anything, but... Alright, let's get Alright, I'll probably do one more temple um, towards the end of the banner. Um, and then after that I'm probably going to save up for Maya. Uh, though I don't really, I'm not really using her for much. So with all that said and done, let's go ahead and go over our Apex stuff. Alright, so uh, you can see I already made some changes. Um, I'm thinking of doing this setup for the... Um, uh, for season three, uh, season three, the biggest issues are going to be probably the ever-growing population of decent assassins and rushdown, and the fact that juggler is just going to be an absolute monster now, and I'm going to have to first ban him. Um, but as far as like the previous seasons are concerned, um, actually this was season three. I think season four is what's coming up. The um, the the weaknesses, I guess, I kind of see with it uh, how I did in my previous seasons were the. Um, one is I don't really have an answer for assassins. Um, really, my only answer was to hit them, either hit, deal with them first with like someone like Claret. But if I don't, if they ban my Claret, I literally didn't have very much in the form of mobility. Um, the only other option is to try to tank the hit. Um, so I am trying to introduce less mages. I mean, as much as I enjoy using mages, um, it uh, they are pretty much just fodder for any sort of assassin type character. Um, I still have a lot of mages, it's just I managed to add it. With Deedlet I at least have someone that's at least an infantry, though she's kind of not exactly durable, at least not yet. Um, the other issue is I was um, through the pretty much season 2 and season 3, I pretty much relied heavily on Estelle um, using either Cheer or once her 3 cost skill came out, uh, her, I used her 3 cost skill, which uh, provided like plus 12% to all stats including skill and then of course gave you plus one mobility and then uh, a, a bit of a heal. It's also really long duration. Um, overall it's really nice because it's very flexible. It can be used on anybody. Um, the bad part was it, as I got higher and higher up and I was going against opponents that always had a faction buff because they either have Juggler or um, Landius. Um, I think the stat differences were starting to catch up on me. Um, I was still pretty impressed on how well um, Estelle was able to tank with just her self uh, with just her um, partial buff. Her buff is essentially about like a two third of faction buff. Um, and I, the biggest issue is faction buffs generally provide uh, twenty uh, t plus twenty percent to attack and and defense, and then plus thirty percent to magic defense. Um, Losing out on that magic defense, I think, is what hurts me the most. I mean, my my tanks aren't very tanky against magic to begin with, um, but only having you know a 12.66 percent uh, buff to magic or whatever or magic defense, um, you 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 saw it in some of the videos. Like literally, I would either barely survive a mage hit or it would just wipe me out immediately. Um, and even against physical attacks, eventually it got to the point where like a, a very beefy uh, juggler could take and one shot my tank. So um, what I'm going to try to do now is I'm going to try to focus more on using Freya again. Um, Freya I actually really like using. Um, I do like having that fixed damage counter stuff. Um, the bad part of course is fixed damage can easily be negated. But in comparison to Estelle I think Freya actually has higher t uh, defense and magic defense and I just got her um, I do have access to her um, uh, magic guard as well, so I can at least guard my other characters and at least use her to be hit instead of anyone that does damage. Um, I did get her up, to get her uh, six uh, skill point. Um, the, if you want to know pain, 
doing Freya's uh, awakening mission was by far the most difficult thing I've ever done. I thought, um, I mean, I thought Sumire was tough, but like pre-nerf Sumire was tough. Uh, Freya, literally, your first opponent is a uh, Gerald and Layla that is holy class, which means, of course, magic and has holy words so it can self heal. Um, I had to essentially with Freya, I had to buff up my. I actually had to buff up my soldiers, uh, like my spear soldiers' attack power, just to do just enough damage so my counter fixed damage would kill um, Gerald and Layla before they hit me. That was the only way I can win. I would essentially attack Gerald and Layla, do a bunch of damage, and then hope that my counter attack was enough to kill it, and, or not the counter attack, but the um, the passive uh, fixed damage would kill them. That was the only way I can do it. Um, once you get past Gerald and Layla, the rest is easy if you're Spear, because it's just physical damage, and the last one's Calvary. But uh, yeah, that was a. It, it actually, I ended up wasting a, a number of keys and um, uh, Aniki mats just to get enough raw damage uh, to get Freya her six skill point. But with that, she actually can do um, a few things. Um, so now I can actually run around with. Um, uh, Lance Phalanx, Heavy Shield, and, and a Faction Buff. The Heavy Shield will hopefully make it so there's a 1 in 4 chance that I just take little to no damage from physical attacks. Um, also, I have the option to just swap in an Iron Rose. Um, that way I can at least guard against magic. I hate this ability for the most part. Like The only thing I want is the passive. The active is just awful. I mean, the 20% less magic damage is great, but losing your defense for it in exchange to it, it will actually lower my defense. Like I tested it, it lowers your defense to equivalent to 250% of your M defense. But as you can see, my M defense is only like 300, <laughs> so it's it's a it's not great. Um, I mean, if someone can convince me otherwise, by all means. I, but seeing my red my defense suddenly become a red number was kind of concerning. Now, if I'm going against nothing but mages, by all means, I think Iron Rose. Using it, activating it would probably be a good call. Um, anyway, so I'm going to be focusing on Freya. Freya does have a faction buff, as I mentioned. It's an SR faction buff, so it doesn't have any added effects. It's just raw stats. Um, the main reason I didn't really use it in previous uh, seasons was simply because I didn't have a lot of Origins light in this box. Um, originally, it was just Freya, Luna, and um, Tiaris. Uh, Tiaris is a healer, she doesn't really need the faction buff, and Luna has her own, own faction buff for Princess, so it was not really that useful. Hence why I just relied on Estelle a bunch. But d is, is Origins of Light, I do have Lifany here as Origins of Light. I also have Sophia here as, I, as another healer. I replaced Liliana with Sophia. Um, on, honestly, Sophia is probably not the best pick. Um, Liana is like top tier as far as healers are concerned, but like I mentioned before, uh, in previous videos and probably in this video as well. Um, I'm trying some new things and I'm not really too concerned about being super optimal at this point. I just want to see how things play out. Um, overall though, I don't really use Liana even when I had her. Um, I, I generally preferred utility that had that uh, Tiara's had or, Clo or Chloe or in some cases Iris with the teleport. Uh, speaking of Iris, I did drop her. Um, I don't really need her, uh, her teleport really anymore. Um, Against skilled players, they usually, well, against this tank, uh, the tanks that are Landius and Juggler, um, I end up just not needing the teleport usually. Um, I may change my mind in the future, um, but we'll see. Um, as far as the box itself is concerned, I'm just trying to get as many faction buffs as possible so I have options instead of just relying purely on Estelle. Um, I tried really hard to figure out a way to get Angelica in, because of course she has the time faction buff. Of course it's just an SR version. But I just, I couldn't, I couldn't get the space for it, because literally all Angelica would be used for is the faction buff, or her, um, or her mass attack buff. Um, she does have some offensive line based damage, and technically she has Windblade, but she, her troop choices are not great. Generally, I just go Lava Titans just to make her a little tanky. Um, her uh, ready to go is really kind of neat. It's kind of a neat little um, uh, minion you can summon that's kind of customizable. Um, but it's not 
it just doesn't against higher level players it's going to do pretty much nothing is the issue the real reason you would use something like ready to go is in conjunction with someone like sumire who does more when she has less troops or if you want to get like i guess i guess technically you'd probably use it with pyro test to get her talent to trigger as well um so unfortunately i couldn't do it she would be a if she was a little bit more useful, she would be great in this box because I have a bunch of time faction. I, re I also really wanted to use Sakura. The Sakura is amazing. Um, I really like using her uh, Hyaka Ryoken, uh, Ryoren, um, but I I just can't get the space. That, it's the same issue with Imelda and Spinistrate and I, I just I can't really figure a, way, a, a good way to fit them in, um, especially when I don't have a faction buff for them. So that's kind of the situation here, but I do, um, obviously I dropped a, a number of casters, I, there's no more Lana. Uh, for right now I dropped Young Jessica, um, I may throw her back in to replace Lifany if Lifany doesn't play out, but I want to mess around with Lifany's 3 cost skill and see what sort of shen shenanigans I can get into. I've already gone over why she's not that great in PvP, but we'll see how it goes. Um, I do have Angelica in, or not Angelica, Angelina in. Um, she's only 5 stars, but she does have that 3 cost skill, which would give me some AoE. It also gives her extra actions. Um, I did get her um, custom uh, uh, equipment, uh, so she can actually ignore some of the um, loss of buffs due to her extra actions. Uh, I'm not sure how well it'll play out. I don't really have much experience using Angelina at PvP. I would just, she usually just didn't perform that well, in my experience. Um, but I'm hoping with the AoE and potential freeze that I can maybe cause things to mess around a little bit. I don't like the, the idea of relying on a 20% chance, but it is what it is. Um, besides that, it's most of the boxes, the rest of it's kind of the same. Uh, Angelina will at least go well with Zerida, though Zerida is going to probably be banned. Um, I guess one thing to note is I do only have, it's a th I went from a 2 tank, 4 healer setup to a 2 tank, 3 healer, and 1 deedlet setup. Um, that's something that uh, the Chinese servers supposedly do uh, with Deedlet because Deedlet can kind of do a little bit of everything. Um, she can self buff as well. Um, and she has a bunch of stuff that either provides a direct heal or a passive heal, um, which will be kind of neat. Something to note about Deedlet is her um, her City of Miracles uh, reduces cooldown, which is pretty cool, including her own. Um, this, in combination with Sophia's ability to lower cooldown, I might be able to do some pretty fancy stuff with that, but I'm not entirely certain. Also, since I'm not using you right now, let's switch you back to this. But, um, yeah, so I... The other thing that, um, Deedlet would probably be... Like, using her as sort of a, a sub-healer, um, you usually need a certain weapon for that, which does the equivalent of the Faith passive, which is essentially after attacking or being attacked, or... I think it's just attacking. After attacking, you um, heal the lowest HP of your um, of your team. Uh, I don't have that weapon, so that might not play out. But like I mentioned, if it doesn't work out, I'll drop Lifany, and I'll probably end up taking Young Jessica, who does have access to area heal. So she's not got full fledged healer, but she will hopefully work in a pinch. Um, she does have access to area heal and then uh, Breath of the Goddess, which also heals and dispels. So that, and also attacks, so I do have some options to play around with, and also young Jessica is going to be 6 stars soon, so we'll see how that kind of goes. Anyway, um, hopefully that wasn't too rambly, this is actually my second attempt to record this part, but hopefully it's a little bit clearer. So essentially, I'm going to see how well Dilit does, even though she's only 3 stars at the moment. Um, when I used Yuli as a 3 stars, it was kind of fun, um, though a little bit frustrating in her case, because there were percent chances of failing her heal. Um, but I'm also hoping that uh, having a kind of a bunch of characters that can either self heal or passive heal, kind of like uh, Rachel here, that I can survive with this three healer setup. I'm also hoping that maybe the three heal healer setup will bait bands for my healers first, and then I would just go and grab Deedlet, do healing instead, and maybe Rachel, and uh, see how things play out that way. Um, so anyway, the goal is I'm going to use Freya first from now on and see how well she tanks. Um, and uh, see how that origin stuff goes and how it plays out. Um, it was kind of interesting the, uh, in the previous season, kind of how I had a kind of a routine of picking Estelle and I ended up kind of flowing into um, eventually getting at least some of my mages. It, I ended up getting like the same box over and over again, which was kind of interesting. 
Anyway, so, since you guys are probably sticking around, I I was not expecting to get Wyler on my first draw. Um, I did off... Uh, I did um, part of the video that I clipped out. I did do another poll on Masters of Congress. I didn't get anything, though. So, but since I literally got what I wanted in the first 10, I was expecting to spend 100 uh, polls to get what I wanted. I'm going to go ahead and just do a few more of these. Um, the next summon uh, that matters at all to me, I believe is just Maya. And I'm not too concerned about getting Maya because I can't really use her because our factions are not very compatible. Um, the really the big ones that I need in the future is probably is um, uh, what's her name? Sri Lanka. And there was that other person I don't remember who's aquatic. Um, when I originally used Angelina, I had her aquatic because I really wanted an aquatic unit, but I it just didn't. She just wasn't. I couldn't get it to work. So I'm hoping to try out this other character and see how she does. Um, but the major one I think after that one is um, Licorice, uh, which has a faction buff, uh, the dark faction buff, and that'll change things up a lot for me, hopefully. So, but for right now, let's see if we can get... I don't mind if we get Ashram, but I would like to get another D-Lit if possible. So let's go ahead and do some pulls. Um, so technically I've done 20 pulls today on this. I'll just do a few more. Gold. Second one. Okay. Well, that's a lot of golds, but I don't need them. Uh, they still give me some uh, time shards, or whatever they're called, um, which will be useful for getting extra, um, extra rune stones every month. All right. So third one. Fourth one. Okay. Fifth one. So far I'm not going... I mean, I just got two from just a ten pull, so I guess... Is it balancing out on me? Okay. Six. Seven. Oh, there we go. So counting the twenty I did previously, one I did on camera, the one I the one I cut, this was ninety bowls, so a little before pity. Oh good, another D-Lit. Perfect. Alright, good enough. Uh, we still have another 100 pulls, so that's going to be enough to at least get something from whatever other banner I'm going to do next. But uh, yeah, I'm up to 86 shards, that's enough to at least get to 4 stars now, so good to go on that front. That. All right. So I'm happy with that. I'm not going to go any higher. All right. So three turn, three, uh, the act again ability now only has a three turn cooldown instead of four, which is really nice. And uh, every Block of movement uh, gives me an additional 4% uh, into defense rather than uh, just plus 2. So, good stuff there. 
give me a nice little boost. Um, I do have her heart bond already for, fully maxed. Uh, this today had the update, uh, which gave the heart bond for uh, Needlet here. So as you can see, it's fully maxed out. Um, Elven Sword Fighter gives her, um, when she's the one initiating the battle, she takes 10% less damage. Uh, usually she'll be attacking from range, so it's probably not an issue. Um, and then when she's forced into battle, she, uh, her damage dealt is increased by 10%. So good stuff there. Um, I can't max these out just yet because I have to go and get the Spirit of Tides, which I haven't actually done the, the mission for yet. Um, I'm, st I'm still finishing up the Elite missions. Um, and then down here with um, with Pierotes, uh, her heart bond got unlocked, um, which I, got up I have up to 6 now. Um, and then her Gate of Fate finally unlocked. For some reason and this wasn't available last week, I don't know why, uh, so I'll go through these later see how things go from there um but yeah um i guess how are we doing on uh now that she's four stars how's she looking and she's sitting about 30 okay that's about right the 82 32 up here is a six star uh d lit so that's what to look forward to uh this is the weapon i was talking about the gift of eternal this thing does a heal uh whenever you're attacking and after the battle uh I'm still waiting to get that, unfortunately. I don't have that right now, and that might, might hurt her healing capabilities. Um, but I'm hoping things like the, the Elven Aura and the Sea of Miracles will take care of everything instead. Um, I do have the Gate of Truth available, um, so at least when she's attacking, she's going to have some pretty nasty attack uh, offensive capabilities. Um, so we'll see how it goes. Uh, is there anything else to mess around with? I don't think so. Spells one buff. Yeah, pretty standard stuff. Alright, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, call it from here. I am the depressed duo. This was Language of Bubble. See you guys later.